Okay, I've always wondered what was inside one of these. Uh, these are actuators. Uh, the correct ones have four uh, terminals on them. They're labeled one, two, three, four. Uh, I went ahead and pulled these grommets out, but before you pull the grommet, there's actually a spacer in there. So anyway, I removed those grommets. I pushed them out. Uh, this easily slides off. I'm joking on the one before you have it CAD plated and cleaned up. They come off rough. This gasket here comes off and this seals the entire unit and this comes right off. I'm joking again. It's all stuck and you know formed on there. It's kind of a bitch to get off but you can take it off like that. Now if they're not running what I find is these things the brushes on them. Oh by the way the rubber part comes off. What I find these brushes are usually in good shape. You can take them off and take a little sandpaper and clean them off but I find if you just spray them with some uh, good cleaner after we're done with the oiling operation uh, which the oiling operation is you put a couple of drops in here because this bearing will seize up here. Then I hold it sideways and I drip a whole bunch on all the gears making sure where it comes through here that we get those covered. Uh, you can pull this off. This is an oil. It's supposed to be have a little bit of oil on it, which I do right now. You can drip some in here. These are all contacts, so I try to avoid that area. But anyway, after I drop a bunch of oil in there, I set it a little bit like that. And I don't want the oil to run down and get in a little motor, but it is pretty well sealed in there. Now after it soaks, and I'm talking a lot of times I let it set a week, uh, first of all you got to make sure the armature is moving. Now there's windings on the armature, but if you get something pointy you can go through, and I don't know, can you see that move? But I can move that armature, but don't push on the windings. And that'll break it loose, or if you look down through there, there's one that goes to the motor winding. And the one that goes to the motor winding is this back bottom one in the corner. And you can get that thing where you can turn it with your finger like that. If you can't, it isn't lubricated and something's bound up in it. So anyway, uh, to break it loose sometimes, if you get a screwdriver on that particular one that the motor's driving, you can look through and see that motor drive gear. Then you take and you can go like this when it's real stiff, being careful not to break those brass teeth. But that gives you a little leverage. But you got to be real careful. And if it does not break loose with a little bit of turn there, a little bit of pressure there, or a little bit of pressure here, I let it soak longer. So uh, anyway, that one's all done with the oil and stuff. And then I take a good electronic cleaner and I spray those brushes and I clean it out around there to make sure I uh, get the uh, oil off of those brushes and get it off of that uh, armature there. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and reassemble this now. And first of all, I'm going to slip this baby back on there. I've had it on and off so many times it goes right back on. We'll put the cover on it like so. And then I'm going to get a screwdriver and wedge these in. But you basically, uh, I get the back started. Like such. And then I start with my big belly, I start taking the screwdriver and working the edge of that. Yeah, I'm still working on this. If you get the thing started through there, sometimes you can grab it on the back there. Now, uh, I usually get something in, uh, about the size of that opening run through and make sure it spreads out nice and round. And then we go ahead and put that spacer in there. I'll go ahead and get those other three in there. And uh, before I do that though, this just covers on this side. And the plate that it clamps actually will clamp this down and seal it. Over time, they kind of get glued to that surface. But I'm going to take a little bit of sealant 
and seal that so I don't get any water in there uh, and get it sealed up good. All right, and just as a curiosity, this is one that has been put on the car, one of the cars I have, and it's got the same principles of operation, but you can't get in and clean this out. I'm going to take it apart, but uh, the other thing about it is it's got all kinds of stops on it, and I'm not sure it's got the return to neutral. I'm not sure that it will open because... Like on the heater flap, you want it to open about a quarter of the way, and there's a little notch in the valve that the thing should open to, and then there's a full open. So I don't know that these will give you the positions on the valve you need, so I'm going to play with one of them, but that's more modern one I think somebody sold as a replacement. This is another uh, different age. I think this one's a little older. But basically, it's the same setup, and this was a Lucas 4-pin, uh, which is what you want, and there is a ground on it. You know, it's a lot easier when me and Ralph work together. Uh, this selfie stick is uh, not real uh, good for all the things I do, but uh, I went ahead and bolted this in here. That's actually the water valve. You can see there, I talked about it's got a stop. It's got a stop here where it shuts off. And see how that thing just wants to be there? There's actually a little groove in it that allows it, to, when it pops open, that's kind of your half open position. And then it will go ahead and push it to full open. Okay. This guy has a little Allen screw in the end of it. It sets in there, and then the rod goes through it. It sets in the middle, of course. And I'll get that in there. And then this sets on there, and it actually rotates. Well, the engine rotates it all the way around, so it does this motion. But it makes a complete circle. We'll show you that as we get it put together. Uh, the other thing I would mention is this one, I just put washers on with my nuts. And of course, these valves, they clamp together. These are two pieces. They're a bitch to get apart. And if you do pry them with something, make sure you get the burrs off so they seat properly. There's a big old O-ring, big old fat O-ring that goes in there. And it's kind of a specialty O-ring to seal that up. I put a little bit of uh, grease on that so it doesn't seize up as I tighten. But these are threaded, so you actually... Uh, Put your bolts all the way through, tighten that down. Then you shove it through here, and then you tighten those down. So that's how you get it on there. And then the next thing I'll do is the rubber goes through the hole, goes in like that, and there will be three screws with a small washer that go on them. And we'll get all of those started, and then we'll uh, get our uh, extension there adjusted. Right left uh, wings are where these are mounted. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more. I went ahead and I uh, put the arm out here and to get it there I'm going to hook up the battery charger. We'll test it but basically to talk you through it. In this position once you get it there that's the farthest throw it uh, is at the farthest here, and this is when the valve shut. We got the half position or quarter position and fully opens on over here. So you want to make sure you got enough length, but this is the th farthest throw this way, and you want to make sure it goes all the way up and just barely not touches. And that's not really accurate, but uh, you don't want it to be pulling against that. But there is flex in this, and this is a strong little motor the way it's geared, so it pulls on it pretty good. Uh, anyway, I'm going to hook my battery charger up, and I'll run this around and show you how it works. Alright, I'm going to clip my positive on there. Move it over a little bit so I don't get too many sparks. Okay, this is the all the way closed position, which is number four. Now, if I go through number one, that's all the way open. 
Number two, you can see it comes on around, and that's a on around, and then this is the closed position. So that's basically how those work, and that's all tested out. Uh, I did have to mess with it a little bit. I had it too loose. I'd rather start out loose and then tighten it a little bit. So uh, anyway, that's the way I suggest you set them up. Uh, these uh, bolts here, and I think they're 2BA. I don't know. My eyes don't judge them the way they used to. But uh, anyway, four of those connected over to the fender well. So uh, it mounts like that. There's a beam that runs around the, uh, I say fender well, I guess I should say the wing on a British car. And there's a ridge that runs around. These go in the ridge. And these right here, this is a bear to get in. But that's how you fasten it to the car. And, of course, you got the hot water coming in. And you got the cool water or basically coming uh, to the heater core. And that's on the right side and the left side also if you got a cloud three. And as I said before, on a cloud two... Uh, you only have one of these, and uh, the heater box is double the size, but uh, I don't know if there's a difference. I don't think the thing really heats up anyway in the winter. They never get really warm.